Hello everyone, welcome back to The Geek Blend. I'm Jeff, and I hope you guys are having a great Christmas so far. Hope you guys got to spend time with your family and have a great day today. Uh, so I hope you're having a Merry Christmas. And welcome to a Wonder Woman 84 non-spoiler review today. I'm going to do a very short non-spoiler uh, review. I'm just going to kind of get my thoughts overall on the movie without going into plot details or certain details about the film. Something might spoil the aspect of you going into it if you want to go into it with an open mind and nothing else uh, to ruin it for you. So um, I will be doing a more in-depth review over the weekend sometime, uh, get into more spoiler details. Probably going to watch it one more time to kind of like really kind of get a few things in my brain because I'm still kind of going through it at the moment. I just finished the movie, still processing everything. Let's talk about the, the good thing I like about this movie. The best thing about this movie is Gal Gadot. Uh, as a Wonder Woman, that's she is perfect in this role. The best casting a, in, in a superhero role since uh, Henry Cavill's Superman. She is just perfectly cast in this role. Zack Snyder cast her very well. Uh, a lot of people didn't understand why she was cast, but now we all understand. I, I understood after seeing BVS. I know why she ca she was cast. She kind of holds this gravitas and this. Uh, she just has this essence in this character, and it works so well. She does such a good job with it, and she expands on it in this film as well. Everything she does in the film is great. There's a few things about the character I wish they would have not done, but I'll get into that a little bit more with the spoiler territory when I do the spoiler review. Uh, so overall, her performance as Diana and Wonder Woman and her interactions with the other characters, everything she did most mostly worked for me. Getting away from her character, that's where it starts to get into the territory where it doesn't work for me. Let's talk about Kristen Wiig as Cheetah uh, slash Barbara Minerva. And um, I will say that when I saw that she was cast as Cheetah, I was a little bit hesitant, but I'm like, I'm going to go in with an open mind because I don't, I'm don't. i not really a fan of Kristen Wiig. I thought she did some okay stuff on Saturday Night Live. She wasn't that funny. Uh, Bridesmaids was overrated. She, I didn't think she was good in that role. I think everybody outshined her in the movie by about a thousand miles. Uh, Ghostbusters 2016 was, a pain, was painful to watch. She was the worst aspect of that film, in my opinion, as well. And then going into this, we get into her character's role, and immediately she's that quirky, awkward, weird uh, that she plays in every single movie, and it doesn't work in this one at all. I mean, I just don't like her character. I don't think she's funny. I don't think she can act well either. I don't. I didn't buy her, and I didn't buy her uh, arc from Barbara Minerva, this shy, dorky, weird girl that nobody paid attention to to what she became in the end and her arc to get there it just wasn't believable for me and I didn't buy it and I didn't understand it like I still go back and think why did she pick to do this yes there's a small reason why but it doesn't make up for the overall of what she becomes it doesn't make sense for that to happen it just I don't buy it at all Maxwell Lord played by Pedro Pascal now I'm not a huge Pedro Pascal fan he is a really bad person in real life. He said some very nasty things on Twitter and on his Instagram. He said some really nasty things about half the entire population of the United States. So, and he's doubled down on it since then. He's not a good actor, I don't think. Uh, he was decent in Game of Thrones. He was very, very overrated. A lot of people thought his character was like one of the best things about that season. I completely disagree. I thought he was one of the weakest things about the season he was in. And uh, then we'll get into The Mandalorian. Uh, he has no presence in that role at all. He's not threatening at all. It just doesn't work in that role with him either. And then this one, he was okay. He was just there. Um, some of his performance was okay uh, when he kind of got a little bit more desperate in the end. A little bit of that worked, but most of it didn't work for me. I'm not a huge fan of his in the first place, but... If he did a good job in the role, I would say, even though I don't like the guy, I thought he did a really good job. But as it turns out, he did not do a very good job in this role. I thought he was miscast as well. If you've read the comics and you know Maxwell Lord, I just don't think he played the role that well. The story was okay. The big MacGuffin that everybody's going after in this movie, it, it's something that kind of works and sometimes it doesn't. Like I said, this movie, half of it works, half of it doesn't. The first half I thought was pretty decent. Uh, the opening scene... And Themyscira with uh, young Diana and all the other Amazons was a fantastic opening scene. I really enjoyed that. I, I really did. Uh, but in that opening sequence, when the, that, that's all setting up, you already know that this is going to be a little bit different. It has a much different feel than the first film did. Uh, but it, you could tell going into that it was going to be a little bit different than what it was in the first film. Different tone. So it set it up very, very early. Let's get into Steve Trevor. I'm not going to tell you guys how he became back, why Steve Trevor is in this movie to begin with. The scene with that, that is in the trailers where she first sees him for the first time and they kind of connect, I really enjoyed that scene. 
it was very heartfelt, very heartwarming to see her actually see him. Like, realizing that's him again uh, was a really great scene. And they do really well. Their, their chemistry on screen is really well. It works really well. And it, it did in the first film. That's another reason the first film works so well. is because of Chris Pine and Gal Gadot. Their, their chemistry was great. And it is again in this movie. Uh, he, he's the fish out of water in this movie, and she was in the last film. There's a few things about the fish out of water stuff that works, and there's some of it that didn't. It's a little bit too much. And you think to yourself, like, okay, there's no way he would have thought that. Like in the, in the, in the trailer, where she's saying, there's, this is art. And he, he looks at the trash can, he's like admiring it. He's like, she's like, no, no, that's a trash can. He's like, oh, that's just a trash can. He would have known that was a trash can. I'm just, I'm sorry, but he would have known that was a trash can. That was a little weird. Even when they came out of the trailer, I thought, I thought it was kind of dumb. Most of his scenes work well. I'm glad he was in the film because without it, without him and Diana's connection and chemistry in this movie, it would have been a lot worse in my opinion. Let's get into the soundtrack now. The music was done by Hans Zimmer, one of my favorite composers, and some of it really, really worked well and some of it did not. There are some instances in the film where they used the Wonder Woman theme that we first heard in Batman v Superman, and they kind of orchestrate it a little bit more than they, it's not as raw and as primal as it was in BVS which is why it works so well um, there's a few instances where it's like I said it's just too much orchestra behind it a little bit um, not as bad as what Danny Elfman did in uh, the theatrical cut of Justice League where he absolutely took the theme and just butchered it absolutely butchered it most of the music in this movie worked for me uh, there was a very very interesting song from another DCEU film at the end of this movie that kind of came out of nowhere but it worked for the scene it really did when you hear it if you're a fan of the DCE movies the Zack Snyder films uh, stuff that she's appeared in before you'll be like wait a minute I know that song I knew the name of the song I came in my head right away I'm like oh my god they, they used this song I thought it was pretty cool it worked for the scene and the rest of the score was pretty decent there was a few like I said a few things didn't work but, but overall I really enjoyed it when you're watching the film the first time you take in the score, but you're trying to take everything in at once, so everything's just kind of coming in all at once. But when you go back and rewatch a film, you know the plot points that are coming, so you can kind of pay attention to things like the score and the background and the digital effects a little bit and things like that. Um, I will say about the CGI in the film, a lot of it works well, but some of it does not at all. There's a few things that really stand out. Cheetah definitely stands out. There's a couple shots where it looks decent, I do not like the design of Cheetah in this film. I do not. I don't understand what they were trying to do here. You easily can look at a comic adaptation of Cheetah in the last 40 years and pull one out and easily make it look decent on screen. It just doesn't work at all. And I did not buy Kristen Wiig's Barbara Minerva becoming this character. I did not. And like I said, some of the CGI did work. But there were a few things that stood out, and when they stood out, they, they, they just stood out very, like, like, a, like a sore thumb, basically. Just right in your face. There was a really cool sequence involving Steve Trevor and Diana Prince. You see it in the trailer when they're in the cockpit of a plane. I'm not going to spoil that at all, but I really, really enjoyed that sequence as well. Um, there was a few sequences in the film that really stood out, and there was a couple that I'm like, I don't even know why this is in the movie. It doesn't make sense. That being said, I believe I'm going to be done for the spoiler-free review of this movie. So if you guys want to see more of my in-depth thoughts about, like, get into the plot and the characters a little bit more, uh, I will be doing that over the weekend. So look, for, look out for that. So make sure you guys have the bell turned on for notifications so you can find out when that drops. Uh, but overall, it was decent. Right now in my head, if I had to score it, out of 10, I'd probably give it about a 6, maybe, maybe a 6.5. If the score changes, I will let you guys know at the end of the spoiler review as well. But it was just a very average film. I will say the reason it's average is because half of the characters, the main characters, didn't work for me at all. The performances were not great, and it just took me out of the movie, unfortunately. Chris Pine, Gal Gadot, they do a great job. All the Amazonians in the beginning, I love that sequence. Bringing them back was great. I can't wait to see them again in Zack Snyder's Justice League in the spring. It's going to be nice to see them on, on screen again. To be honest, I really wish we could get more on Themyscira in her early life before she came, became Wonder Woman. And maybe if we get a third film, I do think we will. I'm not sure if Patty Jenkins is going to be the one doing it. 
because of what she's doing with Star Wars, but I do think there will be a third, and hopefully they will explore and show a little bit more on Themyscira in the next one. Maybe in her younger years, like between very young and, and what we saw her become, and like those teenage years in between a little bit, because I love all the stuff on Themyscira. That was one of the biggest highlights of the first film, was, was all the stuff on the island. And it works in this film too, just as much as it did then. I just wish you would have seen a little bit more. Like maybe a few flashbacks. That is my spoiler-free review of Wonder Woman 84 that I gave a 6 to a 6.5 out of 10. Hope you guys enjoyed the review. Hope you guys enjoyed the movie as well. Have you seen it? If you have, let me know down below. Try to keep spoilers out of the comments. I would appreciate it. But just let me know what you thought about it. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Are you looking forward to it? Are you even going to watch it? Uh, I'd like to hear from you guys. I always do. I'll leave a like on the video. It does help us out. Subscribe if you're new and you want to see some more. Hit the bell for notifications as well so you can stay up to date on everything we release here on the channel. Also, links in the description for social media, Discord, and all the ways you guys can support the channel. The Discord continues to grow all the time. Great community over there. I definitely recommend checking it out. Uh, all the ways you guys can support the channel include Patreon, Subscribestar. If you want to become a channel member, you'll get behind-the-scenes content from me. You'll get custom emojis and loyalty badges next to your name when you're in a chat in a live stream or when you leave a comment on a video. So if you guys want to check that out, just hit that join button down below and you'll see all the information on that as well. And I want to say thank you to all my current channel supporters, whether you're a channel member, Patreon, Subscribestar, PayPal, whatever you do. Thank you guys for your support. I really appreciate it, and it really means a lot. And I want to say thank you all for this amazing year. We had 1,000 subscribers. The community continues to grow. We've, we've developed more live streams and different things to do on the channel, and it's been such a fun year. And I'm looking forward to 2021 and what it brings for the channel. And I want to say thank you all again for what you did, commenting, becoming channel members, just all your support, everything you guys do has been fantastic. Thank you all so much. Hope you had a great Christmas, and I hope you have a happy new year. I'm Jeff. This is the Geek Blend, and remember, if you geek about it, we speak about it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Merry Christmas.